Hey, Nat. Hey, Beck. Beck, I have a new poet for you. Ooh. Her name was Hilda Doolittle. And she's like a little less dead than Emily Dickinson. <laughs> so she died in 1961. So she feels very current to me. Anyways, here are the lines that I was so excited to read to you. Oh, wind, rend open the heat, cut apart the heat, rend it to tatters. Fruit cannot drop through this thick air. Ooh, I love it. Right? And it's so apropos for our summer series duh <laughs> part de redux part, part de about you guessed it heat heat can you hear the little scampers no in the background is that a word I don't scamper. think you've made it one. <laughs> I, I'd like to call the little feet pattering scampers. As in like a cat or as in, as our, in my nieces? My, as in your nieces, yeah. I just heard a little pat patter patter down the hall trying to get something from their room. So it didn't bother <laughs> me, but I'm bothered. <laughs> you know what? But you could be hot and bothered, Beck, because it is hot. And you did yeah, turn off the air conditioning for this specific episode so that there would be no extra noise. So people, we make sacrifices. <laughs> <laughs> we do. And you know what? We better um, get a motor this along because I did draw. I know I, I bumped the air conditioning really high so it would stop. So oh. mom is going to be hot any second because she's visiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're talking about heat. So we've got some things to list about heat, right? Yes. But first, I just want to just acknowledge that phrase through this thick air. Mm from the poem, because that's such a great line. The right. alliteration there, yeah. and the but, air is thick. Well, yeah, I mean, like she really nailed it with that one. And the idea of rending something, as in like cutting it in half, like to cut the air is, it just feels like she really, yeah, she hit that one. Rending the thick air to tatters? Yeah, this lady knew heat. <laughs> Maybe also, she was menopausal. I mean, honestly, that could have been part of her story. And so then all, I'm all about it. Right, so it wasn't even hot outside. It was more she's hot in her body. Could have been. Could have been for sure. All right. To to discuss further in our poetry book club. Yeah. Okay, but jumping to our summer heat list. First, I also want to say, could we just name each a couple times we've been very hot? That oh, yes. Fun. I could do that. Do you want to start? I. Yep. So I remember being so hot living in Riverside, California, it was right. Like right in right in the inland. So there was no water. California, no water is not. It's not super awesome. No, it's no joke. You need to be by the ocean if you want to really experience all that is California. So that mm -hmm. was a that was a hot year. And you were hot. pregnant. So I was pregnant, yeah, and there were a lot of hot fields to walk through, <laughs> <laughs> mountains, arid mountains. Mm -hmm. And I remember you describing these hot sod sidewalk walks where you'd literally like time yourself to get from the shade of one tree to the shade of the next tree. And you knew that there was like this path of heat that you had to walk through to get to that shade. So that's literally how you'd make your way to whatever coffee shop you were heading to. Do you even remember that? I remember either you wrote about it or you told me, but it's definitely yeah, stuck in my memory. Yeah. I do remember that, although it's funny because there weren't that many coffee shops. So it was just, <laughs> it would have been walking to the Starbucks for sure. Actually, you know, I still do that on Dundas. That you'll actually like measure what's the, the shade to the shade? Yeah. Do you not do that on Dundas? It gets so hot in our neighborhood. I don't know. I don't know that I think about it. Maybe. Actually, I mean, I'm thinking about heat all the time, but I probably am just cognizant of consistently trying to find my way to the shade. I'm definitely that person. Because for me, I remember being so hot when we were in Mexico. Do you remember there was like that trip that our two little families took? And it was so fun, but it was kind of new for me in terms of my issues with my foot. And I got really panicky because it was the first time I'd been somewhere where the heat was so humid and thick, like Hilda Doolittle rend into tatters kind of thick that I 
like I flipped out. Like I really thought it was all coming back. Like I was going to get sick again. Like, I think I made you find antibiotics in your like medicine kit that you brought like random antibiotics that had nothing to do with anything. And I was like, I'll take them. I need them. Anything. And I had, I had pause. I had random antibiotics. Yeah. I don't know about that. Why? (laughs) (laughs) But you did. And you probably saved my mental health just by letting me swallow a pill that we don't actually know what it was that I ate. (laughs) Yeah. But anyways, yes. So my, my memory of heat in that space definitely shifted a little bit my enjoyment of aspects of that holiday even though they were wonderful just because the heat can be so debilitating especially when I just my foot swells up like crazy so now we just know that so now I think it's just sort of like resignation but then it was new and scary yeah so what what are we doing we're reframing it was a little bit today right because we have to reframe it to be able to function in it so in yeah heat the enjoyment of heat. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are some of the ways that we enjoy it? Okay, well, I number one is I'm thinking that you have a capsule. <laughs> can you say that word? Capsule. I like a capsule. A capsule summer wardrobe item. <laughs> now yes. you say it. You say it now. Capsule. Capsule. That's what I say. It does okay. look like capsule, but anyways, I'm gonna say <laughs> capsule. <laughs> Little summer wardrobe item in which I declare should be linen shorts. Okay. Make that one of your items. I was even reading about tailored shorts this summer that as an option to jean shorts that you can have a more tailored look. Mm -hmm. And although linen does get really scrunchy and it can get a bit messy looking, but that's but kind of the look, right? Isn't I kind of like that, but and I and I also just love the feel of linen, sh- linen, and just an option for jean shorts. Okay, against jean shorts. I like that, though. I love your I jean shorts, have... but yes, I think this sounds fun. I now, shall have something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for someone who can't wear shorts or who chooses not to because of all of my leg issues and my compression sock, I I like to hide my my foot with long dresses. So my mm. capsule wardrobe option is this wonderful, super airy, like almost see-through. I probably, if I'm actually going to wear it in public, need to wear it with a slip, but I kind of don't even care because it's so hot. It's a bathing suit cover-up from Nordstrom. Mm. Like, I think I was weeding in it when I was at the farm last. Like, I wear that thing. I, if I can just stay in that thing all the whole summer, I would be the happiest Natalie ever. Cause it's so airy, it's breezy. It actually makes the weather feel cooler simply because of the way that the wind kind of blows through it. But you do, it, it opens, right? Mm-mm. I'm trying to picture it. My long orange one. Oh yeah. It's just a dress really. I associated it as being a dress. Yeah, but it's a, it technically is a bathing suit cover up and technically is see-through, <laughs> which is why I don't wear it on Dundas, <laughs> but I could. <laughs> I do like that. And I like that on you. Yeah. That's a, that's a great item. Yeah. So a capsule item, unless you'd like to call it a capsule <laughs> item is a beautiful bathing suit cover up. Qua dress. Qua. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. So summer wardrobe items next books by Rachel Cusk. Two Mm -hmm. of them. We've got one each, I think. Mm -hmm. And the one that I chose is called second place. And the reason why I chose it is because I really feel like in that book, heat is mentioned all over the place. And like, there's this one specific scene and I'm not giving anything away. I don't even think that's how it works with Rachel Cusk. You just kind of get to enjoy all of the lines that just come together. And I wondered, how did I describe it to you before? I think that she writes characters who you are like either connected to or find relatable enough, even if you dislike them, that you're kind of into them. That was how I felt with the second place main character. But there's this specific scene where wait, she- Wait, you didn't like her? The, the main character? character? Yeah. No, I didn't okay. want to hang out with her. Right. But I liked, like, I liked her restoring of everything constantly. Like, I could sort of, every time she told a story of something she had experienced, I actually said to myself, it didn't happen that way. Mm. Every time. 
right she's telling herself that it was this way but yes. I know it was a different yeah yeah but i kind of appreciated that because that's so human so there's just something so relatable about the mm. way that i think cusk's characters move through their storying but there's this one specific scene where it's a mother and a daughter getting out of uh like taking basically like a skinny dip in the in their pond and it just really brought to mind heat like just mm. that you could get out and be that nude obviously on your own in your own space nobody's around um but yeah there was just something so hot about it not hot like they were so hot i mean they could have been but anyways it was just more the heat buzzing in the air of the reading of that book that i felt so that's mine mm -hmm. what about yours and yeah just the, like heat in kind of a rural place because i think she's in this isolated mm -hmm. part of england maybe i don't know i didn't i couldn't even totally figure out where it is maybe are in okay i had set I them know, in my but... mind in america like kind of rural mm. America, because I think that the guest that comes to stay with them is from England. That's how I had determined it, but I could have had them flipped. It could yeah, have been the other flipped. way around. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go check. Um, I was also thinking of her book, Outline, okay. which is part of that trilogy. Um, and it's this English woman flying to Athens. And it's okay. Her on, her on a plane for the first part of the book, just talking to this Greek man and he's telling her about all of his failed marriages or his two failed marriages, hmm. which sounds so boring, but is there something about Rachel Cusk that is really plotless, but she just gets into the, psycho the psychology of people in such a way that, I don't know, it's very engaging and you kind of just, I feel really sucked in, even hmm. though really you would say there's nothing happening. It's just a woman on a plane talking to a man. Now, like just he's, curious, he's in so terms... narcissistic or something that and she sees it. So it's funny. Oh, he is like he is the character is the narcissistic one. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because I would say in second place, that's part of what kind of strikes me is the maybe sort of almost narcissism of this woman, but it's only in her head. Like, I don't think her actions towards the rest of the world are that but the storying that's happening, which maybe that's the part that feels so relatable and maybe it's brought up in the heat of it all, but like, there's just something about the, um, you know, your own story is just all you. That's like what happens what are, in our heads. Yeah. And like her own private motivations, because she does in second place, I think she gives her home her, she gives a second like, house on her property to this artist. To, yeah. Which is a generous offer act except she's doing it for herself. Yeah. <laughs> so is yeah. it generosity? I don't know. It goes back to that love and Aussie and gift stuff that we've talked about in other episodes. Yes. Okay. So go read some Rachel Cusk. And revel in the psychology of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And keep your air off when you're doing it. If you have air conditioning, which I don't have. So for us, it would just mean turning off a fan, but if you turn your air off and read it in the heat and see if that does anything different for you. Right. Like if your if your brain closes in and you just get more connected to her characters. Yeah. Like either you like really relate to them or they really drive you bonkers in a good way. Like, I don't know, maybe there's something in that, the heat, what it drives us to or who it drives us towards there. That's the line I'm going for. <laughs> Okay. Also, number three is classical music and heat. Yeah, we think they're tied. What say you, Nat? Well, Frankie has stopped his little piano lessons for the summer. And so it's just the two of us. And as I just said, our house is not air conditioned. So we have all these breezy ceiling fans and none of them match <laughs> because well, anyways, they just don't, but and, we go ahead. And you do, you do have a lot of ceiling fans. You're a lot. Was like, I'm going to take care of my tenants by putting in <laughs> many ceiling fans. Exactly. And they're all, none of them quite match each other, but they all do the job. So anyways, if we don't have the ceiling fan on near where the piano is, Frankie and I can get rather, we can get kind of cranky. So you got to turn that ceiling fan on to be able to play a rather difficult grade two sonata 
that he is going to be playing the whole summer because I don't anticipate we're going to be moving through this piece anytime soon. But it is so fun when we are just cool enough and the breeze is just happening enough. We are really enjoying ourselves. And I think I told you this the other day. He actually like stood up from the piano and walked away from it. And I heard him say to himself, I am proud of myself. <laughs> and I thought that was such a win. I don't think he yeah. might have said that had it been had he been like scratchy with heat. So I'm going to say thank you to my landlord for those ceiling fans <laughs> and for the Sonata. I love it. How about you? Can you just a sec? Just, this is really cute because mom and dad are clearly at the end. Can you hear their little chatter? No. So they clearly are not anymore <laughs> honoring the podcast. <laughs> They're just like, just talking like normal out there. But okay. <laughs> I find that hilarious and sweet. Like, I don't hear her, so that must be. You know, we're done. They're just like, That's it. They're just done. They've just moved on. Should I yell at them? No, I can't no. hear a thing. Okay. Um, okay. So read classical music. I was thinking, I find it really interesting that Tchaikovsky has the set of 12 short pieces that are all one month of the year. So it's hmm. called the seasons. And Elsie has learned so she just did her grade nine piano this year and she has learned April and October, Ooh. but now she's learning August <gasps> and I am going to learn July. Oh my gosh. You guys are doing the summer series. Yes. Literally. So they're really fun to listen to. So go listen to the seasons opus 37 a by Tchaikovsky piano solos and revel in July and August. And maybe you want to listen to June too. Oh, I'm or excited. September. Yeah, there, I think it's fun. And then I have this dream that we would do a concert for, the two of for you. somebody <laughs> yeah. alternating. I would play January. She would play February. Wouldn't that be like, so romantic, romantic and sweet. And yes. I'm sure it would be none of those things. <laughs> <laughs> or it might be for a moment. Yeah, we might have some good moments in there anyway. Yeah. Oh, I it's like really that. It's really funny because she's got, she did those nails. Yes. All those nails. For her graduation, her grade eight graduation. She got the, oh man, what are they called? We don't do our nails generally, so we don't the think near, of these things. Like, I know. Stick-ons. <laughs> Anyways, they were a thing. <laughs> yeah. But so she, when she plays the piano now, it's like they clack. Oh, and she probably likes the sound. I like the sound. Yeah. I've done that once in my nails whole life. Nails clacking. Really yeah. long nails clacking. Yeah. There's something satisfying. Some of my students would have the really long ones and they would clack and they actually liked the sound of the clacking on their phones. So I could actually, right. I wish I could get a sound, a sound effect for that to create with some sort of a, like a TikTok video. <laughs> I just go, these are my students. Like that would be my little run. Anyways, that's so exciting though. I love, I can't wait to actually hear both you and Els play those songs one after the other. That would be very romantic for me as the listener to get to be a part of that. The summer series on piano. I love it. <laughs> okay. So we've got that in terms of our music. And then uh, the next on our list are some cold foods that we think and people think this should be spending be the... some time with. And our last item, I think on our list. Yes, but there are two, we've got two foods, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's okay, cold, so cold foods. Cold foods. Category. It's... So I'm going to do my first one because I'm very excited about this. And this made me think of you back when I did this, because I have a memory and tell me if I'm wrong and if I've made this up, but I have a memory of you liking creamsicles. Yeah. Right. I so, yeah, I, I think, think when so. you were younger, that was a thing that you liked. So anyways, I found a recipe for creamsicle, dairy free creamsicle, quote unquote, ice cream that I can make with frozen clementines and frozen bananas and then a little bit of plant milk. And so I threw Ooh. that all in the blender and then I handed it to Frankie and he was like, what is this amazingness? Cause he'd never had a creamsicle before. So now his first exposure to creamsicles are frozen clementines, frozen bananas and almond milk. And it's amazing. Wow. It tastes exactly like the real deal. Wow. So it must be the clementines give it a little tartness. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Like it actually really did taste like the old Chapman's creamsicles. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. The ice cream. Yeah. Pretty neat, right? Yeah. I, I know. That. that was such a win. So that's, that's me. Genius. Thanks. So you will obviously make a TikTok about that. Oh yeah. 
but I need to get more clementines <laughs> and then I need to freeze them. So it's like a process. But anyways, if you have oh. those things, throw them in the freezer. So you can't do it with if the bananas and clementines have to start frozen. Yeah. Otherwise, That's key. but then aren't you going to freeze it anyway? Oh, you're just making it's like turning into an ice cream as opposed to a popsicle. I, I just kept imagining popsicle, like you know those. Oh, that's interesting. That are... Yeah, I didn't explain myself very well then. Yeah, this was like me basically making like creamsicle in a glass. I should have said that. Okay. But but as an ice cream, not as a shake. Right. So he's using a spoon. Yeah. Okay. This all is the getting, details. Not oh, this is getting spoon. very specific, and I need to yeah. get better at that. <laughs> but yes. I'm I'm extremely detail oriented now. Sometimes like I like to know the details to really get into it. Even I was talking to someone yesterday and they were telling me about their friend and then I wanted to know all the details because it just creates a better story. Well, better it creates image. a better picture too, because you're mm -hmm. right. You could have ended up with like completely a different recipe than what I intended, though it could have been beautiful. <laughs> so maybe right. there's something in that. Playful experimentation. Okay. My cold food is... I was reading Bon Appetit magazine yeah. randomly and I found this recipe for a green mango salad. What was interesting is that green mango salad is made from green mangoes. So mangoes that are not ripe. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought mangoes are dead to me when they're not ripe. So mm. I opened it. It's not ripe. It's not delicious. What do I do with this now? And then this recipe apparently needs unripe mangoes, tart, hard mangoes. Natalie, is this something you already knew? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't matter. I can see, I love I can that see you're cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see even when I sent it to you that it wasn't the revelation it was for me. I feel like my life has been changed. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so basically everyone, if you're just a little slower when it comes to food, you, you whisk together some lime, a splash of fish sauce, some finely grated garlic. Natalie's sleeping right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm totally some listening and enjoying this. Finely grated chili, Thai chili. That's the only thing. Maybe you have to go to Nations or some store for that. The Thai chili. Right. Is that easy to get? It, yeah, like in a lot of, in, okay. for, yeah, anyways, go ahead. <laughs> the international food. Okay, so it's okay. Every, go ahead. okay. <laughs> Thai chili, brown sugar. You whisk together your sauce, then you toss it with your julienned unripe mango. And maybe some, some red onion, right? Yep, and some or shallots and some chopped peanuts mm. and cilantro and mint and sesame seeds. <laughs> okay, so if you have all those things, you can make it, and that will be your amazing summer salad that you will enjoy while listening to Tchaikovsky, while reading Rachel Cusk, while wearing your linen shorts or your or your long summer. Yeah. swimsuit cover up <laughs> from north yeah, which we need we'll have to show a picture of that and how awesome that looks on you and then exploring hilda doolittle who's dead but not too dead <laughs> not said in one of our tastes <laughs> i am really liking our series simply because i'm enjoying going through so many of these potentially seemingly disconnected ideas and yet finding like the story that weaves them all together I love storying with you, Rebecca. I do too. And I love talking with you. And and um, I love it so much that sometimes I talk right over you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> We're finding our way, Rebecca, a year in. You know, we are coming up to our one-year anniversary. I know. It's so exciting. Every frameables. To... What are we going to do need... for that? We need some ideas, friends. Anybody who's listening to this and has some thoughts on how it is that we can truly celebrate this, we've sort of put that out there into the universe before, but now it's getting closer and closer and we actually have to do it. Yeah, maybe we need to bring people together to celebrate with us. Oh, that would be fun. Maybe. Okay. These are things to think about. All right. I love you, Beck. I love you. Go enjoy the heat. I will. Bye. <laughs>